Hello everyone, my name is Leandra Banks. I'm the youth advisor for the Katie Abel Foundation. And I'm Zay Marshall, I'm the youth president of the Katie Abel Foundation. And basically we just finished talking about financial literacy and how we really, really wanna get the youth together. So we're trying to make this movement so people can be more aware of financial literacy. So we're starting in our own documentary called The Signs of Times from a Youth Point of View. Should we talk about how we got started? Sure, we can talk about how we got started. Well, we got started <laughs> from taking a trip to Wall Street to see where um, stocks and um, things like that were exchanged and to bring awareness to our other youth. Um, a lot of our youth didn't know about Wall Street, didn't know what happened on Wall Street, didn't know anything about Wall Street. So we felt like the best option was to take them to New York and, and so they could see it for themselves. Right, we took a trip to New York, Occupy New York and the occupiers, and just got an insight feel on what was going on, the importance of why we were there and what it meant to us and etc. So knowing that a lot of our youth wasn't aware about Wall Street compelled us to want to start a movement to bring awareness about financial literacy. To understand financial literacy is to understand finances and that is to understand, you know, debt more, how to save your money, more about investments, more about savings. That's why we stress the importance of financial literacy because if you're financial, financially literate, then you're better off in this world, time. Yeah. this time, this economy. We need to be leaders, we need to be independent, we need to be strong, we need to be successful, and we need to be wealthy. Right. So we can't be these things if we don't understand finances because honestly financial literacy, finances control the world. Exactly. If you look at it mm -hmm. closely and deeply, read between the lines. <laughs> So with that being said, now we're going to take you through our financial um, our financial literacy journey um, and the things that we have been doing as far as trying to get financial literacy. We're going to take there. you through a tour. We hope you enjoy. See you soon. Right. They protected the Wall Street bankers. They would not allow us to cross the streets. They effectively barricaded us from our protests, and it was obscene. It was frightening to me. They are waking up and they're becoming cognizant to the fact that there is things wrong and there's different tangents we're going on, and there, there is a lot of things that need to be corrected. people from our generation and our children's generation had received the benefit of financial education, fewer people would be drowning in debt today. <laughs> now we're going to hear from Carmen Johnson with the Katie Abel Foundation. Hello everyone, I'm glad to be here and I am glad to stand by our controller and the youth of the state of Maryland on financial literacy. Thank you. For these reasons, that I'm pleased to support Senate Bill 307, which we heard today in the Health and Environment Committee, 
Requiring comprehensive financial education is the only way to ensure our state fares better in the next economic crisis and pulls out of the current recession. We must arm our young people with the tools to succeed. This issue that we're talking about here today, that financial literacy is every bit as important as reading, writing, or math, the citizens of Maryland are asking us to take action. So what is your personal take on instilling financial literacy in our youth? I think it's critically important for it. I think the Katie Abel Foundation focus on financial literacy is very, very important. Uh, they need that financial education right. about money. So I think financial literacy is extraordinarily important. It's important for young people because if you start out on the right foot, uh, you can stay out of financial difficulty. Uh, but we also need to make sure that people who didn't have that opportunity also are exposed to knowing about uh, financial matters. So what are your personal takes on financial literacy? Oh, I've always been an advocate for financial literacy. I'm so proud of uh, Katie Abel Foundation for their work um, to um, enlighten and to inform uh, people. So what do you guys think about financial literacy? Mm, financial literacy to me, it means like money. Well, I think financial literacy is like how we use the money. Financial literacy is like saving our money and using it for important goods. Uh -huh. What about financial literacy? Do you know anything about financial literacy? Or how important finances should be? Uh, you need them. Yeah. Because you need to know how to learn on a budget. Great. Yeah. Do you save your money? Do you have a bank Yeah. Account? You do? Yeah. You're saving up for something? Yeah. No, just saving money. Just saving just to save. <laughs> yeah. College or something? Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. <laughs> financial illiteracy, a little bit about civic involvement, um, leadership, the crashing on Wall Street. How it not only affects our everyday people, but most importantly, how it affects our youth. People lost their jobs. My uncle, <laughs> he got fired. My grandfather was a, a laid off. One of my family doesn't seem to have as much money, and they keep complaining about not having as much money as they used to. Now, who in here likes money? <laughs> I thought I would see a lot of hands. <laughs> what do you do with your money when you get it? I save it. Um, well, basically when I get my money, I push pick the cent in a saving. I'm saving my money for the uh, Retro 6 Olympics. I just Here. spend it on shoes Here. and clothes. To, like, just go out shopping. That's what I do. So where do you guys get money from? Um, I get my money from either doing shows on my house. Um, money from my mom. And my dad. I just asked him to send my money and then he just sent it. I usually babysit like when I don't go to school or when on the weekends and I get money from there. Just by me sitting here talking to you guys and looking in you all's faces, I see leaders, I see entrepreneurs, doctors, doctors, lawyers. So I hope you guys prepare for your future today. talking about how the economy is going right now and things on like such as the issues on Wall Street. Uh, programs are getting cut and people are going to have to pay for programs that used to be free. Um, well, my financial literacy class, I was, we talked about um, loans and budget. We try to make financial literacy a requirement for students to graduate so they can have a knowledge of what to spend, how to spend their budget, their planning, their future goals, and stuff like that. It also has to do with education about the politicians we elect. Oftentimes when we elect people to office, we don't know what agendas they may have with housing commissions and banking companies. A lot of people in Congress, 50% of them are millionaires themselves. They're gonna think on their level because they've already superseded that level of minimum wage and middle class, so they're not really 
they may say they have the middle class at heart, but they cannot think at the same level because they're not at that level. They don't live on that level, and they don't come back to that level when they go home. Most of the time, most of the time now, we do not really know what they're planning because mainstreaming wise, we'll, they always are going to talk about religion and how how they're going to help us. What steps have you guys take to ensure your financial freedom? I plan on getting a job during the summer and I plan on saving some of my money for college. Right now I'm working my hardest to get a scholarship one way or another. Like, since this we're a minority, I feel that we should get as many scholarships to take the advantage, like get as many scholarships as we can. It's like America, we usually expect the government to help us in our tough situations, but we can't always rely on them because they have issues too. In America, we have a strong sense of individualism that says that like, well, I have what I got, so you should go get yours, but like, Nowadays, it's not like that because jobs are so hard to get. I go to school and I learn something, but like, there's no jobs for me because it's not what it used to be. So it sounds like to me that we really should have financial literacy in the schools. Yeah. So financial literacy is, is going to be a great course if everybody takes it. Your finances before you, after you leave high school is going to be very important. So I think it's, I really want to push that to be another requirement for students to take before they graduate. Not everybody's going to be able to get financial aid because of the amount of money that your parents make. So therefore, you guys have to find other avenues, um, like scholarships, that you might have to take out a loan or a grant or things like that. Save your money, try to find scholarships, everything, because in the future, you're gonna need it. Like, right now I'm a sophomore and I'm looking for scholarships, trying to do different programs and everything to benefit me when I'm a senior. You don't understand is that the bank, it's not something to help you, it's actually a business, so like, they're gonna want something out of it because they're a, they're a, they're a money making business. So like they're gonna make sure that you're gonna be paying that loan for a very long time. They want you to keep paying it. It's not your fault. It's their fault. I mean, it's your fault for not taking financial literacy because you don't know what you're doing with your money. <laughs> but they know that you're not. You're a student in college. You're very very new to life. You're like, oh, let's take advantage of this young boy. Let's let's take, let's take his money. Let's take his money and let's leave him with nothing. They just keep taking. They just keep taking until until you're buried in that soil. I graduated from Lansdowne High School and I was a part of their Academy of Finance program, which was a separate magnet program from the school. Of course, you still went through your regular English, math, things like that. But other spaces were filled up by personal finance, you had economics and world finance, mm -hmm. an accounting course, things like that, that got you familiar with your personal finance. Yeah. So that was pretty much what my high school experience was all about, just personal finance. It doesn't matter what you do, you need to know how to manage your finances. Because once you step out the doors of either high school, college, or whatever, you stop, it's going to hit you in the face. Hello, we are here today. Um, Ed Barrels accepted our invitation, and we are very excited about that. Um, to be um, a part of the documentary and um, it really feels good to have a supporter that sits on the Board of Education, which is Ed. Um, he's been supporting um, the Katie Abel Foundation for a very long time and we really, really appreciate it. And um, we are very excited about this interview and um, talk to you soon. So what are your personal takes on financial literacy and how do you think financial literacy um, is in effect with our youth today? Absolutely. So my, my thoughts on financial literacy are twofold. Uh, the first, as a young person, mm -hmm. uh, I'm only 19 years old and one of the first things that I received in the mail when I turned 18 was a credit card. Mm -hmm. I received multiple credit cards. Uh, and not every student, especially in our community, uh, know what to do when they receive credit cards in the mail. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, financial literacy wasn't taught when uh, my parents were in school. So it's important that, especially in our communities of high poverty, our communities uh, where parents might not be too sure mm -hmm. about the rules of financial literacy, that we, that, that we uh, instill that in our students. Right. Uh, because not every student is getting it from home. Uh, and ultimately, uh, well oftentimes, students when they get the credit cards, they go, uh, they spend uh, money, that, money that they don't have, uh, they get in debt, uh, they can't afford to pay for college, uh, and it's really a cycle. Uh, and it really goes back to that cycle of poverty that I often speak about. Um, and the only way to really defeat that cycle of poverty is through education. Mm -hmm. And education with financial literacy, education just in general. 
um, and that's why financial literacy is so important. As a member of the Prince George's County Board of Education, it is extremely rare that I find uh, an organization, a nonprofit, that is as dedicated, uh, as motivated uh, as the K. Abel Foundation. Their willingness to sacrifice uh, for the good of the district, for the good of students, is absolutely remarkable. Uh, and I enjoy working with all of them uh, to really improve the quality of education in Prince George's County. Not just the quality of education, but the quality of lives of our students because at the end of the day, financial literacy goes beyond the classroom. It's practical advice that every student needs. So I definitely appreciate their work and I wish them continued success in all of their endeavors. My love for, uh, for education and my love for wanting to become an educator mm -hmm. started when I was in second grade. And so I have education as one of my top priorities in being down here. As I assess my, um, my love for young people, I work with a lot of young organizations uh, to encourage uh, youngsters to stay in school and to be successful. I want our youngsters to be the best that they can be. The youngsters uh, in, um, in our society have to really understand the history of Wall Street. What truly happened there? The collapse of our economy, uh, what happened with the foreclosures. Uh, th th these were people uh, who uh, were very, very wealthy and they became wealthy on the backs of the middle class and the poor people. We as adults have to do a better job of educating our young people as to what truly happened on Wall Street. And we must give our, our youngsters the skills and, and we must talk with our youngsters about the things that they should do in the way of preventing this from happen, happening in their generation. Because the problems on Wall Street boil down to one word, greed. People are seeing a need now to extend themselves to help other folks. It is not about the Democrats or Republicans. It's about people coming together to work for the good of future generations. Hi, my name is uh, Thomas Miller. I'm uh, president of the Maryland Senate. Well, the major problem is the uh, recession. Uh, it's a worldwide uh, economic problem. We're coming out of the recession. Our sales tax are up. Our income tax is up. But uh, it, it affects the budget. And the budget is morally what we're all about as a society. How much money we put into education, for example. Uh, I don't like me as a politician uh, dictating to educators uh, what they need to teach. Uh, I think they need to recognize that it's very important that uh, every student be financially literate and that everybody understands that uh, you, you can't have unlimited credit and that these credit cards come with catches, namely 18%, 24% like interest. So in that sense, I think it should be part of every students' curriculum. you see um, as far as our youth financial literacy? No. Well, the, the, the challenge, I wouldn't call it a problem, that we are going to want to be able to have financial security. Uh, most uh, students today are going to incur some debt in order to graduate from college. And by the time they start realizing that in order to be able to 
have security, we need to have savings and retirement savings, mm -hmm. and it's difficult to have the security you need. So I think one of the challenges is that uh, Americans are, uh, are known for a lot of really good things as far as ingenuity and innovation and mm -hmm. their work ethic. But they also have a, a bad habit of savings. Mm -hmm. So we need to do a better job in explaining the importance of savings. Now, what are um, your thoughts on some of the bank practices that were used before the meltdown of Wall Street? What happened was we saw a change in our financial institutions. And banks made basically either home, uh, commercial or personal loans. Mm -hmm. Banks were getting into everything else in addition to that, including risky investments mm -hmm. and trying to go into fields that were not really banking fields. And the regulations there were inadequate. So we found that we had banks that we could not allow to fail because it would have uh, devastated our economy. They became too big to fail. They got involved in areas beyond banking and then the taxpayers were called upon to back up uh, these risky investments. So then what are some of your personal takes on building financial literacy within our youth today? I think financial literacy is critically important. What I would just urge people to do, you, you have a budget. Part of that budget has to be put money away for your, for, for your future needs, whether it's savings or whether it's retirement savings. You want to do things that are in your best interest based upon your age and your tolerance for risk. And can you get a 25-year-old to focus on that? Can you get an 18-year-old to focus on it? And that's what you're doing, and that's why it's so important. Right. So we want to make sure that you have the information you need in order to be able to make a proper decision about the school that's best for you and how much it will cost you. Okay. Can I just tell you this is wonderful that you're doing this? What you're doing is so important. It makes such a huge difference. Mm -hmm. And you're doing it. So thank you. Thank, <laughs> thank you very you. much. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'm going to take this with me. You guys have any trouble finding the place? No. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the only trouble with coming after the country. Yeah. But with GPS, you know, that's, uh, yeah, that's the way I get around. Go in, sit down. Go. Uh, that financial crisis is something, to some extent, that took a lot of people by surprise. But if you look back at the basics, we should have been able to see this coming. Uh, the simple thing of you can't buy something if you can't afford it. So I think we all have learned lessons from, from the crisis and hopefully that will help us avoid that in the future. Because you know I see cases every day of, of where uh, not only the value of things but just the ability to acquire things uh, is something that really doesn't uh, occur to a lot of young folks, particularly if they have the plastic. Financial literacy will help a, a, a young person understand, and in fact anyone, to understand that you have to have the ability to earn income before you can accrue debt. You have to have some way of paying that debt. Financial literacy helps a person understand revenue, expense, discipline, and this desire for instant gratification that I think has kind of been built into our culture over the last few decades is something that uh, we have to uh, educate folks that, that uh, you, you can't have something just because there's that uh, feeling of uh, instant gratification. I, I see this, I need this. Financial literacy will help uh, uh, one understand that you can't do that always. The work of the people is about planting seeds so that it grows for others who come behind. Generational wealth. Right. That's, that's what financial literacy creates. So that, as opposed to uh, the concept of living paycheck to paycheck, you ultimately get to a concept where you live off of the affluence of the generation before you. And that, that's the reality for us. And, that, and that's how we approach this work every day. I think the best leader can really talk on their experiences and I think financial literacy is extremely important because here's why I think about the student loans I think about the you know the debt that's prevalent in the black community no matter how successful you are but you find many communities and I'm going to go out there and say particularly in the black community where we are you know we are spending but are we saving in the capacity in which we need to be to one of the big concerns was with the crashing of Wall Street and, and quite honestly the world economy. Um, what would that do for us as we're trying to expand 
um, job opportunities and commercial growth in the county. And then foreclosures, a number of, you know, the, the ripple effect of the crash has been that, you know, people lost yeah. their job. But clearly in these economic times, people have been hurt, you know, and people are struggling. I mean, financial literacy is an important issue. As you know, part of the reason, not just a crash of, uh, of Wall Street or the world economy, but part of the reason we saw struggling in Prince, places like Prince George's County is that the, the knowledge of how to make sure that you have good credit, how to manage your household income, something that a lot of people didn't get in high school. Mm -hmm. Quite honestly, I didn't get it in college, so right. I think going back to our young people now in high school and middle school and teaching them the value of saving, we've got to get financial literacy on the front pages for um, our young people mm -hmm. that will help them manage their money, stay out of debt, and therefore be very productive. In special cases, we do um, intervention, household budget interventions. So we are doing a Katie Abel Foundation household budget intervention. Come, please. Shall you got, I, I told you that I needed you to call me. Didn't tell me anything about recording. We don't have to show um, you on the, the camera, but we do want to teach financial literacy. I decided that um, it was a good idea to come in and talk to the family about how, you know, we can all work together. Down the road in the next couple of months, she could be in a situation where she could lose the house. How could, you know, you guys work as a family to make sure this doesn't happen? She really needs y'all help. I don't have a suggestion, I'm more so concerned because you, more, you know more about it than I do. The depth that you were going and speaking to somebody else about it, you ain't, you never sat in job with me about it like that. But well, you don't hear the me source. complaining I mean, every month not, for paying these bills. No, honestly You don't not. hear me complaining every month, every month that you complain. Ms. Rockley, what do you think, what do you suggest? To hear about it like this, mm -hmm. this is the first time it's coming out like this, mm -hmm. and, and personally I'm offended by it. Mm -hmm. Because this is not what I understood was happening today. And then to come downstairs and see this, I'm like, explain to me, and I have, you know, I just have a problem with kind of like being misled. You turn the camera what's off. What was happening? You turn the camera off. So, Ken, by you being a father, what do you think? What's your observations on this? After, 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 after being in two weeks, I, I see that he seems to be willing to go along with the program and do whatever he, as a man, right. do what he is responsible to do, and that's help it with the household uh, responsibilities. The young lady, she uh, seems to be ignoring this, and she, I, I don't think she's going to be willing to comply with the contract at all. People get funny about money, you know. It's best for you to take a stand while you're in control than take a stand and ain't no money coming in. You know, approach the situation with love, the light, respect, and all that kind of stuff and keep your voice real calm. Cool that's and that's why I have a problem. Well, you have to. <laughs> that's have why I have Thank you all for tuning in to today's episode. We certainly hope you enjoy. But before we leave, we must share the financial tip of the day. And that is to remember that good financial habits are good methods towards a successful future. And again, I'm Leandra Banks. And I'm Zay Marshall. See you guys later.